everyone it's Kimberly and we are back at the workshop so um, I am going to wait and see if I may be a little bit early it is 8 o'clock Thursday evening and this is normally when we come and do our live so um, I just wanted to uh, give everybody a quick minute to um, jump on with us and uh, kind of go over um, the beginning stages of this workshop project that we will be doing here in-house. Um, this is a client dropped off today um, and we are going to get started on uh, preparing this piece for paint. So if you are new to our broadcast, my name is Kimberly and we are uh, coming to you out of uh, North Carolina, Kernersville, North Carolina. And um, we are a premiere for Dixie Bell chalk paint products. And um, we thank you for joining us. If you are new here, uh, we welcome you and we thank you for uh, jumping on and being with us. So um, this uh, piece came to us today. It's obviously a cute little haul tree. Hardware and everything has been removed. New hardware is going on. Um, the particular client that I'm working for picked out her hardware and the hooks and different things that she's going to put on this piece. Now we won't be painting the inside necessarily on this piece, just the floor or the base of this piece per her request. So, um, but we are going to get started. This is um, a oak that we will be working with. Um, and so this is just kind of the very beginning basics of um, kind of a 101 project on this piece. You know, I like to come and show you guys those that are new at um, painting uh, furniture with uh, chalk paint that um, we can give some tips and tidbits along the way to help you guys get um, familiar with the process of preparing pieces for um, furniture paint and um, in this in our case chalk paint so um, tonight we're actually going to be doing the basics on this um, the uh, very top of this piece uh, the young lady uh, started painting with a Lowe's brand um, chalk paint. Um, I'm not familiar with the brand at all. Never heard of it before. I did see it, but um, and you can see so the top of this is a different color. She was really looking for a gray and it's kind of a bluish a blue color. So um, obviously now I am going to remove that. I'm not going to paint over someone else's chalk paint just because um, for my um, for my benefit as well as my customer's benefit, we don't want anything peeling off. And I went and um, just, I got a glove on right now and I can, I can peel this paint off with my finger. So let me pull you guys in. So um, I did spray this paint with uh, our Dixie Bell. Let me see if I can't, I can't bend my phone down any. So I did spray the top of this in here is our um, Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner. So that is what you're seeing. I, that's what the moisture looks like on here. And you can see obviously that there is a blue hue to this piece. This is the paint that um, the young lady put on here. So obviously I'm not going to leave this. I'm going to pull this off of here because you can see here along the edges how it is just coming off i'll just show you right here with my finger now the reason it's coming off is probably um a prep issue underneath obviously you can see it's got a little bit of a shine on it so chances are there is a pledge or a old english or some form of barrier between the paint and the piece so we're gonna First thing I'm going to have to do is um, get this paint off so that I can, and you can see, so that I can, and I'll just show you. I've got a glove on, so I'm really not using anything too tenacious to try to peel this off, and you see that the paint is coming up. So I'm definitely going to take that off. The good news is it's not on much. As you can see, it's just basically on the top, but you can see our cleaner is just pulling it right off and I'm just going to have to scrape this off. So I will not obviously paint over that. So if you have a pre-painted piece and it's a chalk paint, you do want to be careful um, going over another chalk paint with your chalk paint 
because there's a couple of things that can happen. Obviously, the adhesion is not real great under here. So you definitely want good adhesion on your piece. So in order to get that, you're going to remove any old um, chalk paint that's on here. Now, sometimes you can get by and if it's not coming up, but I always test it. And I did this in front of my client uh, prior to bringing it in. I did just kind of run my finger along the edge. And when the paint come up like that, I knew I was going to have to take it off. You can see it here flaking. So not all chalk paints are created equal. The chalk paints I feel like that you get at Lowe's Hardware, um, Home Depot, um, Walmart, places like that, they're going to do this. They're, um, I know they're... Uh, paint but um, they're not gonna stick it's it's a combination of prep and just their paint product so I hate that it's the way hey miss Terry hope you're doing well so I am gonna be peeling this old chalk paint off of here um, this is a low some Lowe's brand chalk paint um, or was purchased at Lowe's maybe not a Lowe's brand so maybe I need to correct that so I don't get in trouble so we are going to remove that and um, she's going to have this piece painted um, by me, of course, with our hurricane gray. That was actually the color she was going for. And when she got home, and that's another thing, when she got home and she painted it, it's more of a blue and less of a gray. So, um, and that's another reason that we are um, pulling this off and we're going to be repainting this. Um, hall tree. So first thing I did, obviously, um, Terry, you've been with me in a lot of my workshops. First thing I've got to do is get rid of this because I'm not going to paint over it because I don't want to have to um, be concerned about, and I went over that with my, with my client. I don't want to be concerned about someone else's paint coming up, which is going to cause my paint to come up. It's not going to have anything to do with my paint, but if this paint's coming up, what do you think is going to happen to my paint? Whatever you've got underneath of it is what's going to be a barrier between what you're putting on. So I will come in here. Um, our white lightning cleaner is, uh, is what I sprayed on here. And it's bringing the paint up all by itself. So anytime you put a white lightning cleaner and you go to clean your piece and the paint starts peeling off, you know you need to get rid of it. So in this case, I'm definitely going to be getting rid of this. And I'm using, I've got a plastic spatula that I use to put our Dixie mud on. And I'm just going to come over so I know I'm not going to scratch the wood. Because this is my client's piece. I don't want to mess it up. But if you use a plastic spatula, and this is why I say, you know, if you're using chalk paint, use a good, a good chalk paint. Now, um, like I said, the only thing that's on the top of this is white lightning cleaner. And I'm able to just come right along in here and pull this paint off, as you can see. So I'm just going to get rid of it. Yes, I'm just going to dump it on my floor. So I'm going to come in here. So I sprayed it with white lightning cleaner. And I'm just going to come in. I'm going to stand up and just kind of run my spatula. My spatula. Listen at me. I just finished cooking my, <laughs> my spatula. That's funny. That goes to show we do wear so many hats, don't we? Okay, my plastic. And it's just plastic, you see. It's one of our um, applicators for our Dixie Mud, actually. But I'm just going to come in here and use it to help me remove this paint. So you guys can kind of see that. I'm just going to bring it up since I can kind of hold it. So you guys can see I'm not really applying a lot of pressure here. This is the white lightning cleaner. This is not a paint remover that is on this. So you know what you're kind of dealing with when you are able to just remove paint like this and you're just using a cleaner. So um, that's kind of my very first step on this. You know, the first step is always to clean and prep your piece. And um, this young lady started on the very top. My suggestion would be if you're painting for the first time, that you've been painting and you've not done a lot of paint projects before, always kind of start in an inconspicuous spot and work your way up. So once I get this off of here, I'm just gonna kind of gently scrape it off because it's not like I gotta work too hard to get it off, but I don't want it 
I just kind of don't want it underneath my paint because I like to stand behind my products and um, I stand behind Dixie Bell's paint products, but I cannot stand behind a product I don't know for sure and especially one that's just going to be peeling off. So this is going to be my first step on this piece. I'm not saying it's a step you have to do on every piece you get. Um, sometimes you can get pieces that are painted and you can come in and kind of, you know, lightly clean them and then paint right over them without a problem. But anytime you see the paint starting to come off, you need to get it off because it's going to be a barrier between your, your Dixie Bell chalk paint. So um, that's not something I want. I want my, my client to have the best results and to get the best results possible. Obviously, you have to do some prep. I know there's a lot of paints out there that say you don't have to do anything, but in a case like this, there are special occasions where you do have to add, you know, an extra step. And this is one of them. So I'm just going to come in here and clean this off because I want to work with the beginning piece where I know my paint's going to stick to it. So again, I'm just using a plastic applicator here that is normally used to put our Dixie Bell mud on. And I am just going to peel that off, making sure that, and this is just our white lightning cleaner. I put it in a bottle, mixed it up, and I'm keeping it mist moist and that helps it just come right off so so i'm gonna pull this off for her so that and for myself so that i know for sure my product's gonna hold up so i'm just gonna take this little putty knife here this little plastic putty knife and i'm wearing gloves because i am getting the paint all over me, this other paint, and um, also our cleaner. So I'm just going to keep that. My hands are raw. You guys know, I don't want to say raw, but you know, are so overworked from all the washing, your fit hands, and sanitizing, and all that fun stuff we've all been doing to where we just kind of wore our hands. So I'm getting the majority of this off with this um, little plastic putty knife because I know it's not gonna hurt the wood. Obviously, I don't wanna scratch the wood. This is um, a nice piece of furniture. My goal is not to scratch it up. My goal is just to kind of get this paint off. And I figured that would be the quickest way. A lot of times, you know the kind of paint you're dealing with if your cleaner is pulling your paint up. So just so you know, if that happens, always clean your piece so you can prep your piece. So apparently when this paint was put on, whether it's, I don't really know the brand of the paint. I didn't really pay too close attention other than I know she got it there. I'm hoping she'll be able to take it back and, um, you know, get her money back. Because first it wasn't the right color and second of all, it's coming off. So that's a, another sign of a problem. So, I'm just going to get in here and I'm going to clean as much of it off as I possibly can, which is pretty easy. It's pretty much coming right out. So, I wonder how you guys are doing. What projects have you guys been working on? Obviously, you know I've been working on a few here. Got my chicken house done. And, um... <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw the video, a little video clip we did this morning on it, but it's sitting out there waiting for the gator hide. And I still don't have my gator hide on it yet, but I'll get it on there. But she's weathering well, so I'm not too worried about it. It's doing pretty good out there. And um, when my gator hide gets in, that's my polyacrylic. Obviously, I'm going to put my polyacrylic over the top of it once it gets here. And there. I um, pretty much got the majority of this paint. I'm just going to drop it on my floor because I can clean this up get this out of my way. Because that's my first sign 
of an issue for me is when you spray it with your cleaner. Now I am taking this off with a putty knife, which is a plastic putty knife, as I said. So the plastic putty knife has no sharp edges, anything like that, that's going to um, have an issue and pull you around so you guys can see here. And I'm going to come in here and do the same thing. So if you're joining us tonight, this is just kind of a 101 um, tips and tricks when you end up getting a piece. You guys remember I had a, a high boy. Is that what it was called? Yes, a Queen Anne high boy. And it had the same problem. The minute I put my cleaner on it, it started peeling up the paint. And I had to take all the paint off. I literally had to take it outside drawer by drawer and get that paint off of my high boy before I would put my paint on it. Before it'll go out of my workshop, for sure, it's going to be out and going out in its best condition possible and with no paint peeling off. You see uh, my chicken house and how it's doing and um, it's out in the elements. So I just sprayed it with the white lightning cleaner. That's all I put on here. I'm not using paint remover. I'm just using the cleaner. So obviously um, the adhesion is not real good here. And most of the time um, that is because it might not have been cleaned prior to and there could have been some pledge in there with all due respect. I don't know what paint this is, but just so that you know, that's out there. It is possible that the problem is the barrier. Um, and that means that this is pretty slick maybe. And so it's not slick enough in the form that I would use slick stick on it, but it is um, shiny, a little bit shiny. So, and that little bit of shine is probably coming from, you know, some pledge. Somebody's probably gone and uh, dusted it with that kind of product. So, once I use my plastic applicator here, that is so my plastic putty knife, getting the majority of the big stuff off, hitting the big stuff, then I'm gonna come in with my Scotch-Brite and I'm gonna pull some more of that off. So Terry, did you get your projects finished? I know you were working on a couple of projects. And one spot where it's st stuck fairly decent, or I'm just not able to get under it. There. So we're going to clean this all off. Guys, I, ha I have a, a paint order coming, so just be patient. I know it'll be here. I know we still have some paint on, I mean, paint on the shelf, but I know a lot of our lighter colors were um, getting depleted. So um, that order is in, and I know Dipsy Bell is working pretty hard to get all the orders filled and get them to us. So we will be getting them in and getting them to you guys. So I'm gonna come in here now and scrape any of this away. I got my glasses on so I could see Curious about what projects you guys are working on, outdoor, indoor projects. We're doing a little bit of both. We're, do, we're trying to do a little outdoor series, which is, which is kind of fun. So we're bringing some of our Dixie Bell paint line outside so you guys can see the versatility and the, you know, the, be able to use this in um, multiple settings, not just necessarily for your furniture. So you can do it on utility type things as well. Um, in fact, I was probably on one, I'm planning on, and I'm gonna do this live too, is doing some of my lamps, my lights fixtures outdoors um, that are on my house are, you know, faded from the years of being on there. So I'm looking at thinking of hitting them with the copper patina, which would be gorgeous. So um, that might be a live workshop that we do as well on, um, on here for our one of our outdoor series. So you see, I've pretty much got the majority of the big paint off. So mostly it was, she just got this top part 
just going to get it down to the raw, or not necessarily to the raw, but definitely I'm going to come in here with my scotch Bright. But I just want to get all the larger parts, the bigger areas, off of my piece. And so this end is what's holding me up here. So just showing you, this is just kind of how it comes sometimes. Sometimes you get furniture in that has a little something going on with it. You wanna try to get rid of the little something going on or repair it and, um, and then go from there. So I got the majority off just using um, my putty knife here. And this is just a plastic applicator that we normally use with um, Dixie Belle chalk paint, um, the mud that we put on. And this is the paint now um, that I just pulled off of this piece that was laying on the top. So I'm just gonna kind of maybe scoot that out of the way so that I'm not necessarily dragging that around in, in my house. But most of the time I change shoes <laughs> before I go in my home with it just because of everything we're going through. So let me just kind of move this out of my walk area, all this all this excess paint that I'm not gonna need. Now, um, I'm gonna scoot you back out a minute so that I can kind of give you guys a better view there. So that's just trying to get that paint off. Now I've got that paint off, and um, you guys know I always try to clean my piece, which is what I think was missing here. So I'm gonna clean it with the white lightning cleaner, but while I clean it with the white lightning cleaner, you know I use a scotch Bright, and when I use a scotch Bright, that's gonna help de-shine it, and it's gonna kinda of help sand it. So you're kinda of getting two or three things happening here. You're cleaning it, you're deglossing it, and you're sanding it, sorta of all at the same time. So it's a three-step process in one step. So that's why I always say this step first, um, and I'm just going to start spraying my white lightning cleaner on and and then I come in with my scotch Bright, and I'm going to scrub it because that's going to help me take off any wax that's on it, any cleaner or any, um, any kind of pledge, anything that's kind of sticking in here between the product and my piece. And I do give it a good go over. So I work it in to the grooves on this and um, I'm going to pull this drawer out. So I probably need to vacuum in there even though I haven't because I just got this piece in and I am going to come along this whole thing and I'm going to give it a good dousing of uh, the Dixie Bell White Lightning Cleaner because it's gonna save me this problem. If you clean it really well and you scrub it really well, you're not gonna have to peel your paint back off and start all over, which is kind of where this process, she, the, my client, it was, she was able to get, you see how I'm just able to pull that paint right off with my scotch Bright. So if I'm able to pull that paint right off with my scotch Bright, if you can tell that I'm deglossing it at the same time, so um, that's why I always say, get your cleaner out. Don't be afraid to take the extra time that it takes to get your piece clean. So um, that's why I'm gonna jump in here. I'm gonna get my scotch Bright doing its thing. It's gonna pull this paint, the, what little I left on it. You are gonna have to use a little elbow grease in this case because I'm pulling other paint off. But for the most part, you should be able to just clean your piece down and that will ensure that you don't have a barrier between your paint. I think that's really what the problem is here. Um, so that's just a process I'm gonna go through. I am gonna scrub it pretty good so that I can get that off and I can feel confident and secure that my paint is not coming off of this piece when I get going. Let me pull my glasses up. Hey, Kathy, girl, how are you? Girl, yes, I'm working on yet another piece. You know me, I cannot be still. Gotta be going. I sure do miss seeing you guys. And I am working on a haul tree for a client here. 
It's really a gorgeous little hall tree. I love it. So, but I am going to clean it up. Make sure I get my cleaner on here. So I did have to pull this old paint off. Thankfully, it's just on the flat part of it. So I'll be able to get it off. And so let's see if we got anything in here. So you know I always come in and clean my pieces really well. Because for me, it's just super important that I don't paint over this. So, um, and that's what's on your piece. A lot of times, there's a lot of dirt and grim and grime that you do not see. Because it's, you know, it looks like it's clean until you start cleaning it. And then you find exactly what's under your piece. So, um, this is what is inhibiting the paint. So, this is why you're seeing me come in. And clean it even though it looks perfectly clean it's a really cute piece but still um, let me kind of get her back on her track here until you really get in there and really do a little scrubbing you don't realize that the piece is actually as dirty as it is until you do that let me see can I point you guys down anymore hmm, probably not let me see. I know. Let me see if I can lower you. Pardon me for being right up under you. Maybe this will work. I'm going to tilt you down. How's that? Maybe that'll help. So one leg is lower than the other. Let's see. Try to get that tripod to work. So you guys can kind of see a little bit better. I'm just kind of lowering you down. Oh, girl, we miss you too. I'm just going to come in here and just give this hall tree a good scrub. I know you guys that have been here with me often know that this is my very first process. And I do mix my white lightning cleaner a little stronger than um, probably the packaging. But I do that for multiple reasons because it does save me an effort, a lot of effort and time. Because it does clean it down really well get in all those little grooves obviously because I want my paint in there super cute little hall tree I'm gonna get down a little bit lower here because obviously I'm gonna have to scrub on this so I'm just coming in here tonight giving this thing this old piece really it's not even that old but it definitely has 